you went traveling this weekend. I went to Missouri. Um, Saturday was Dan's birthday. He should have turned 53. So I went to see his mama and his sister in Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. Um, which was really nice. They, they had a portion of his ashes that they wanted to scatter at the lake because he was born down there. So we did that. Um, and, and you it was got a race good. car. I got the sweetest night car. <laughs> the, I, I, I got up to the rental desk and I got like, I flew Southwest and they emailed me and they're like, hey, we have this deal with budget. And I was like, I need a car. Cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm expecting like the nice car they've got, yeah, right? Like, because like, like, a, like a two door. There's no back right. seat. It's just like, like a super discount deal. And I get up to the desk and she's like, how do you feel about a Dodge Charger? A purple, a purple Dodge like Charger nice car currently being made. And she's like, yeah, you can't miss it. It's the purple one. It's it's the only one we have ready to go right now. I hope it's OK. A Listen, I drive a Honda Fit. <laughs> this was uh, this was fun. <laughs> it's got a bigger engine. And like I was driving from Kansas City to nowhere, Missouri. Yeah, I was driving three hours away from the airport. And there's no one on that road. No, and like technically they're highways, like you're going highway speed, but there's nobody on the la la. road, so it was fun. Yes, it yeah, was I, a really sexy car. And I know I won. A Dodge Charger is like is the car that like says, you know what? Let's do crime. Come on, you want to do a crime or two? And what's funny is like Dan's philosophy, and he said this all the time, is anytime you're behind the wheel of a new car, you got to open her up and see what she can do. And I was thinking the whole time he'd be so mad at me because I did speed limit. <laughs> the whole way down with moms. <laughs> and I'm like, he's so nice. mad at me right now that I'm on these empty roads in this beautiful car doing the speed limit. So on the way back, I, I might have exceeded the speed limit. A wee bit, a touch. A little. Good. For legal purposes, I cannot confirm or deny. She may have gone back in time. You don't know. I could have at one point. <laughs> but I didn't. But it was it was it was pretty sweet. The only thing it had a weird like bumper guard on it that for some reason they chose bright yellow for the purple car. Little bumper like, strip on because it's a low car. So like if you pull up to a curb, it had like a little rubber strip at the bottom to protect it. Uh, but I'm like yellow. That's, that's like so putting a fucking beanie with the helicopter thing on Chris Evans. Like you're taking something incredibly <laughs> sexy and fucking it up with a goofy accessory. <sighs> All right. By the way, Peggy's here. Well, hello, uh, Peggy. I Where is she? Oh, behind the mic. There she is. Hello, Peggy. In the window, snooze in. They love that window. Kidding. All right, let's uh, get the intro rolling because we have things tonight. Oh, my God, do we have things tonight. Oh, OK, the first out of the gate. Uh, it, yeah, um, holy shit. All right. Come on in. Each week. Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong with You? I crazy literally yes, that what it, that is we call the show that, and quite so often I don't really get a chance to say what the fuck is wrong with you. Um, we, I'm going to have a couple opportunities tonight. Um, the first one comes from India, and uh, I am I'm fucking speech. I, I, I'm going to be like the square said, I never cheated on an exam. I never cheated on any of that stuff. Cause I didn't, cause well, I didn't need to, uh, but I would at least appreciate if people who were trying to, to cheat and stuff were at least clever about it. And to ad admittedly, have you ever seen a plan that was so clever, it wrapped back around to being stupid somehow. My friends and I in junior high Spanish had a very elaborate cheating system. There were four of us that sat in a square and we would knock on the desk. And our one friend who spoke Spanish at home 
had a number sign written on the bottom of his quiz already, and he would point to the number, and we would tap that many times. And he would, like, show us that answer. Well, this is... This is way more than that. And it's incredibly... I don't know what the fuck he was fucking thinking. Man removes thumb skin, pastes on friend's hand to appear for exam. Yeah. Apparently they've so, had in the so like Gattaca, but for real? Yeah, yeah, Gattaca but for real. Yes. Uh Vadadara, uh, in a desperate attempt to get a railway job, the candidate removed his thumb skin using a hot pan and pasted it on his friend's thumb in the hope that the latter will clear the biometric verification and appear for the recruitment exam in his place. You know you can do that with Elmer's glue, dude. <laughs> But the thumb skin pasted on the proxy's hand fell off when the exam uh, supervisor sprayed a sanitizer on it during the myometric verification before the railway recruitment test uh, conducted in uh, Gajarat's Vadodara City on August 22nd. Um, police on Wednesday arrested the candidate uh, Manish Kumar and his proxy uh, Rajaguru Gupta natives of the Munger district in Bihar for cheating and forgery. Both are in their mid twenties and clear class twelve exam in the past. So, because he wasn't sure he could pass the exam, a day before the test, Kumar put his left thumb on a hot cooking pan, which created a blister on it. Then removed the skin using a blade and pasted it on Gupta's left thumb, as he knew that biometric verification we done in the exam to ascertain the real identity. Yeah, it is had a real big rash of people st stepping in and taking tests for other people. It's like kind of an epidemic. So they've like stepped up their ways to stop people from doing it. Literally, you can do this with Elmer's glue. You can. Yes, you can. You gave yourself like a second degree burn for fucking nothing. Yes, you did, and he fucked it up too. As... This it's so weird and so gr oh Leighton says what a bunch of thumb asses who hasn't in school made little fingerprints with with glue yeah. maybe they don't require Elmer's glue for school in India I don't know I just Sir. the the also, Jeez. then you just carved at it welcome to your shiny new infection do you know how easily burns get infected mm hmm. Because skin's not supposed to come off. It's there for a reason. You need that. Yeah, it's it's kind of useful. Uh, now, Mathens... I have often come out against it as a concept because I have eczema. Hmm. And it's bullshit. Yeah. But it would probably be worse if I didn't have it. If I'm being honest, I'd probably be unhappier if I had no skin. Mathton says sick burn there. I just Jesus Christ. I just I I would think the options here are one study harder or two burn the flesh off my thumb and glue it to someone else. Oh. Decisions decisions the fuck man. Like, Alternately like look I know we all we all need a job. We live in capitalism. Right. But if a job requires a safety exam that you can't pass, you just shouldn't have that job. Right. If you can't pass the exam to become a railway operator, you should it's be probably because you should not be operating the railway. And I'm sorry, I know you need a gig. We all need a gig. Everybody needs a gig. Maybe, maybe that's not the gig for you. No. Jesus Christ. I'm not good at astrophysics, so they don't let me work for NASA. Yeah, not Abby is pointing out. It's like scam callers. It requires as much effort as a legitimate job, right? Yeah. <sighs> All right. It, oh, my God. And that's gross. Next up, this one is, you just flew, right? So you, you've, yeah. I... 
I still, to this day, it's it's not quite as bad as it was when I was younger. Sometimes when a plane's taken off and landing, I white knuckle it. I just can't help it. It's just all that. There's so much metal and shit moving around oh, me. I, every time. I hate takeoff. So, and it's, it's, I realized this is the first time I had flown alone in like 20 plus years. So like, I got through it. I did okay. I'm, I, I, you, I'm realizing as I go through this, I'm putting my hands, my life in the hands of whoever is piloting this giant metal tube with jets attached to it. And look, like, I know some pilots. This should make you nervous. Yeah, well, guess what? Um, that's exactly what this is about. Holy shit. Cockpit fist fight between pilots leads to Air France suspension. Air France suspended two of its pilots for fighting in the cockpit during a Geneva-Paris flight in June. Despite the fist fight, the flight continued and landed safely. The dispute didn't affect the rest of the flight. According to a report by the French uh, La Tribune Daily, the pilot and co-pilot had a dispute shortly after takeoff and grabbed each other by their collars after one apparently hit the other. Cabin crew then intervened, and one crew member spent the flight in the cockpit with the pilots. Literally had to keep them separated. Somebody had to babysit them. <laughs> Two grown-ass men. I keep thinking of the line from Captain Marvel. You do know why they call it a cockpit, don't you? I see a bunch of cocks, apparently. I, I just nothing you would. Be sad. If if I was like if I was like weeks later reading the news and realized I had been on that flight, I know I would have probably had a heart attack then and there. I mean, as I understand it, everything in between takeoff and landing is largely automated unless there's a situation. You know, like they're not literally steering the whole time. You no, know? but there's a button on there. There's a button on the machine that says stay flying. And if one of them had been scuffling around, fucking around like a bunch of fucking freshmen and hit the button. Things could have. Imagine just reading the black box on that one. Everybody would have just been like, "Oh, Jesus Christ!" No, oh. bitch, you're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the sapphire says uh, the first rule of cockpit flight club is we don't talk about cockpit flight club. Can you imagine being the flight attendant that had to literally babysit these two motherfuckers. Li not getting paid nearly enough for that shit. I know we're desperate for pilots right now and shit, but come the fuck on. I mean, as it is, like, we think of flight attendants as customer service people who serve us drinks. Yeah. That's not their real job. Their real job is to hold shit down if you plummet out of the sky. Like, the serving drinks is an extra thing they gave them to do. It's not their real job. So, like, as it is, people treat you like a fucking moron when your job is to save their life. But now you have to babysit people that probably make three times your salary mm. because they can't keep their shit together. I, I just, motherfucker. We've been so used to the motherfuckers in the back fighting. The idea, that's already bad enough. Yeah. The idea of the sons of bitches flying the thing, fighting. <sighs> I can I, like that. That's that's just. I, I'm going to just. You're right. We're so hard up for pilots. They either won't get fired, or they will find work at another airline within a week. Like they'll be flying for Spirit or Frontier or Ryanair or some shit. Yeah. Like just th this. This is the what I'm going. This is like the basis of a new ulcer for me right here. I'm glad I didn't know this before I was flying. Right. I would have been very concerned. We have we have more flying stuff, and this is just one of those that we've at this point was is no point in even talking about. We've all gone through, unless you've never flown before, we've all gone through the the security check for uh getting getting from the ticket counter to the actual plane. 
You fucking know the drill. I know the drill. It is inherent in all of us to understand the drill. You are allowed to take certain check now and everybody should get it because it's amazing. It's pricey, but yeah, you're right. Um, you have to put your thing, even with pre-check though, you have a bag, yeah. you have to put the bag through a little thing that's, it's an x-ray, it sees inside all you, they can see all of your shit. This is basic. This is day one. So why the fuck would you attempt to carry along pounds of meth in your carry-on? Oh, pounds of meth. Pillowy mounds of meth potatoes. The Honolulu, Hawaii, the 43 year old female was arrested in the Daniel K. Uh, Inoue, I think I said that right. Inoue uh, International Airport with nearly two pounds of methamphetamine in her carry on bag. 43 year old woman uh, was arrested for allegedly attempting to travel from Honolulu to Hilo with nearly two pounds of meth. Hawaii Department of Public Safety reports deputy sheriffs assigned the Honolulu uh, airport uh, arrested Julia Leilani uh, Kaluku... Kalukukui. Kalukukui. You've actually been to Hawaii, so you got better experience I mean, with this. That doesn't make me an expert, but I'm so More than you. me. <laughs> that, like, just by, by, by... You've actually set foot on the place. Okay, I have it. After the drugs were discovered during a routine security checkpoint search, which is what, like, how the fuck? Don't I be making any effort on this one? Like, just like, I mean, here we go. Maybe she was on meth at the time. This is like the worst mule ever. Well, and the thing is, like, the Honolulu airport is even more strict than most because... If you're leaving the Hawaiian Islands, which I don't know where Hilo is, that might be another island. I don't know. Yeah, I think it is. If you're leaving the islands, your bags also have to go through an FDA inspection yep, to make sure stuff. you're not carrying anything invasive or harmful back to wherever you're going. Yep. So, so they're like more strict. So even the shit that goes under the plane, like, right. at least make an effort. There wasn't even like a false panel that she didn't like tape them to her no, body. Just, just, did a zip lock. just did a fucking Ziploc bag. Just like here. Yeah. Was this her the first day? Julia. What? The balls on you, Julia. I know, right? <laughs> like what, are, what the, the thing there? What the fuck are they going to do? Like, what was your plan to tell them you just like really like sugar? Was was that? I mean, I do really like sugar. <laughs> do you carry two pounds of it in your purse? No. All right then. <laughs> like even even oh my god, even just right now in my brain, here's a beautiful idea for the meth. You take the meth. You turn it into lollipops. You wrap them in dum dum wrappers. Okay. You put it in a dum dum bag, a dum dum lollipop bag, and carry it on the plane with you. And if people look in your bag and they say, "What is this?" Oh, those are lollipops. And you heat shield it, shrink it, you seal it, and do you know what a catastrophe waiting to happen that is? Oh God, yes. But you'll get through security. You'll like some agent inspects your bag and is like, "Oh, I'm just gonna." Okay, yeah, that is that is going to be hilarious though. Because like two, like an hour later, you have one of the TSA people standing on the fucking conveyor. I am a golden god. It's not going to turn out like the Foo Fighters video. No. Where everybody gets baked but has a great time. That's, that's not how it's going to go. Stop helping them. I can't help it. It's just so stupid. Can't we get a better class of villain? Really? I mean, we've been at this a long time, and it seems like the answer is very no, obvious. No. no. Speaking of we can't get a very... I'm tr I tried. Every, ever since I, I got the story in, I tried so hard to work in an I'm at soup joke. I tried, and I couldn't. But at least understand where my head is for this one. 
Two Fayetteville women charged after making bomb threats against Campbell's soup. <laughs> like, I know the sodium content is high, but just don't eat it. Max in North Carolina. Two Fayetteville women were arrested on Wednesday after authorities said they made multiple false bomb threats against the Campbell Soup Company. Adriana Bellin, 23, and Montanique Ziegler, 20. Wow. They're babies. That's a weird age to be fucking with Campbell Soup, right? <laughs> you expect, like, if someone's really got a grudge against Campbell Soup, it's like a couple ladies in retirement over some shit. Right. Like, I, I didn't even know Gen Z was aware of Campbell's soup. It oh. seems kind of analog for them. Both charged with felony conspiracy and making a false report concerning a destructive device. A statement from the county sheriff's uh, Bernice Wilkins said the two women disrupted employees and international commerce with their bomb threats against the Campbell's soup factory. Wilkins said Ziegler previously worked for the factory, but was terminated for something unrelated to the alleged bomb threats. She was oh. sending the threats at the time of her employment. Belen was not an employee. So, okay, so one friend was like, these motherfuckers, I'm going to call a bomb threat. And the other friend was just being really supportive. You got to ride or die. That's <laughs> good for you. We love the loyalty. Maybe try and talk some sense into your friend next time now. Maybe be like, you know what? What if you just hit a, pit a pillow? Like, what if we just egg the factory? Who the fuck swears vengeance on Campbell's fucking soup? Progresso? <laughs> Like, maybe this was, like, <laughs> corporate espionage. She was, like, a progresso deep cover agent. Uh, like, okay, here's the thing about this. I don't know if, if you're new to the 21st century, but when you make a phone call on a telephonic device, they are able, through the miracle of science, to determine who and where you are. Yeah. Wizardry, I know. And you don't even have the payphone thing anymore because when's the last fucking time you saw a payphone? If one still exists, I would be terrified to touch it. Yeah. It would you just, it'd be just under a layer of all sorts of diseases. So there is no phone call anonymity anymore. Like, That's the thing of the... Did you just I, fucking arrive? Going to tell us 12 different ways you can make anonymous phone calls. These people aren't that smart. No, because they're calling a bomb threat to fucking Campbell's soup. They've declared a fucking omerta on Campbell's soup. Let's oh. not assume that they're tech geniuses, okay? And the, I, I, someone had to pad their story. I don't, I don't, Maggie Brown um, had to pad her, the last line of, read the last line, Tara. A 2008 press release from Campbell Soup says that the factory was established in Maxton in 1978. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? You, you were sitting at 280 words, huh? <laughs> I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> you need better padding than that, though. The dictionary defines soup as <laughs> popular Campbell's soup flavors include chicken and stars. Oh, all right. Now we're getting into the, this one is. I will admit on a couple of occasions when I was very, very young, I smoked a few cigars and I will tell you if you haven't been around a cigar being smoked. It is one of the most obnoxious things someone can do to you. Those yeah. things smell like a burnt corpse's feet. The thing I don't understand is you don't even actually inhale a cigar. No. 
You so I of, never understood the point of them. Yeah, you sort of like. To be an asshole. Right. So like you're not addicted to them. No, nope. you're not getting anything from them. You're literally just annoying other people. So now you're already, you know, the plateau. I mean, you know, the level we're starting from here. So. Holy shit. Man who didn't like smell of cigar he purchased set gas station on fire. Did he do it with the cigar? That would have at least been a little classy, you know. Right. Detroit. A man set a Detroit store on fire because he didn't like the smell of the cigar he had purchased and the clerk refused to replace it. The customer allegedly dumped a bucket of gasoline inside the gas station convenience store and then set it on fire. Clerk escaped the blaze. No injuries were reported. Suspect's been arrested. What the living fuck? That is not a proportionate response. Like, first of all, you're buying a cigar at a gas station. Everything at a gas station is shit. You don't buy sushi at a gas station. You don't buy sandwiches at a gas station. The coffee at a gas station is just there as a caffeine delivery device. You don't try to taste it. You just buy food stuffs that are sealed and have come in on a truck. Right. So you buy some Reese's peanut butter cups, some potato chips, a soda in a sealed bottle. A gas station cigar is going to, and that's already worse than a cigar already tastes. I mean, if you want to get down one level lower than a cigar, it's a gas also, station cigar. Assuming, like, if you didn't like the taste, that means it has already been in your mouth. Of course, they're not going to take it back. Right. It's not like a Whitman sampler. You can't be like, you know what? I don't like this one. Let me try another one. Believe it or not, we are still in a global pancetta. And even if we weren't, they're not going to take your slobbery cigar back. Unless it's Walmart. Walmart will take back anything. <sighs> Which is weird, but I mean, and just try and appreciate how, okay, how much is gas right now? It's not as bad as it was. Is a Sheets or a Wawa valid? Yeah, Sheets or Wawa are pretty good, but it, it, all right. How much is, I know gas has come down, but how much is gas right now? It's like average of 350 a gallon. Mm, something, yeah. Yeah. National average. 350 a gallon. So this dude, over what was probably a three dollar cigar, went outside, got a bucket of gasoline that probably cost him 20 bucks at the least, came inside and dumped that shit on the floor. What the fuck, man? I well, think you sure showed them. It's the like this is one of those, it's the principle of the thing gone yeah. way too fucking far. Now, here's the question. Did you buy the gas there? <laughs> Did you give them more of your money? You <laughs> moron? Because that's given big Sean Hannity told me to wreck my own Keurig energy. <laughs> you're not teaching anybody a lesson by giving them your money. Well, you're teaching them that you can get their money. <laughs> you can, you can, they can get your money. Yeah, you're teaching them that you can fuck, they can fuck you over and you'll give them more money. Yeah. But that's not really what you're looking to do, I don't think. <sighs> and you know what? You do shit like this. If you dump, if you start arson in an occupied, that's attempted murder right there. That is. Over a fucking cigar, you dumb shit. You don't, you don't get to try and set people on fire. That's no. not. That's like, yeah, not Abby's like, did he pay with a credit card? You can charge back. I've had to deal with this myself. If you really want to be an asshole, you can, you don't have to set anything on fire. Just do a charge back. Yeah. Like the, the banks are like, oh, I'm sorry. Did they not give you a good smelling cigar here? We'll give her your money back. It's fine. And you hit them for, I don't know why I'm helping them, but you hit them for the, the, the cost of the fees of processing the transaction, too. I mean, it's, it's, uh, all right, this last one. I tried, I literally, I'm not exaggerating. I tried for an hour to wrap my head around this fucking story. It's that bad. This is like one of the worst stories we've ever had. I'm excited. 
There is one clip from The Office that everybody knows because it is just it's it's the one that stays for and it's not the no god no clip. It's the fire drill. Everyone knows the fire drill episode of The Office in which Michael Scott attempts to stage a fire drill only goes a little too ultra realistic with it and everybody panics and and hilarity and horror ensue. What if what if Michael Scott instead of a fire drill simulated a mass shooting drill. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 yes. So- soak in it. Nebraska man hired by a charity to simulate a, a Catholic charity, charity to simulate a mass shooting was charged with terroristic threats. Let listen to what all happened here. Um, <clears throat> John Channels was uh, advised by Catholic Charities, an organization organization with branches in the U.S., to make the drill realistic, which he did, complete with paid actors covered in blood. Fortunately, the simulation caused chaos among employees who thought the shooting was real. News outlet reported the bloody actors laid in hallways throughout the office building. One employee told the World Herald she heard shots behind her and jumped off a retaining wall to try and hide in a dumpster. The incident, which occurred May 19, 2022, began with channels firing at a conference room window of the office building in which the employees happened to be gathered. Fuck! One elderly employee told police she thought she was going to die. This is it, she told the World Herald. So you've given these people all the trauma of having been in a mass shooting. Because knowing it wasn't real isn't going to erase that. It doesn't magically cure the PTSD that they now have. Channel's LinkedIn page states he's a police officer for the Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska. And he's also the CEO of a security firm called Exusia Protection Agency. Is a cop. Is he, though? Neither organization responded to Insider's request for comment. Is he really, though? Daily Beast reported law enforcement said they weren't alerted to the drill and responded as if it were an active crime scene. But this motherfucker's lucky they didn't shoot him. Don Klein, the attorney for Douglas County, told the news outlet that the, quote, police came. They didn't know this was happening. They thought it was a real active shooter. There were people calling 911. Nails was charged with five counts of making terroristic threat and one weapons count. But wait, it gets worse. Identified himself to police <clears throat> as a civilian police officer. Yes. This isn't Channel's only run-in with the law. In May, he was arrested the same month. He was arrested and charged with three felonies, which include first-degree sexual assault of a child, visual depiction of a sexually uh, explicit conduct with a child, and attempted intentional child abuse. Well, now we know how Catholic Charities found him. Oh, shit! Damn! Probably get recommended by the priest. Damn! It's okay, guys. I can say that. I was raised Catholic. I just... How in the living fuck? What happened here? What in the entire happened here? I, I I I am I am I told you this is one of the worst things we've ever had on this show. So this Catholic charity decided, you know, we need to be prepared for an active shooter. All right, let's start off first. That's not so terrible, honestly, because you are in America. You do kind of need to be prepared for it because God knows the government is going to help. Right now, 
yeah, that that's our reality here in America. We we at any time at a point, someone can just come in guns blazing. It just happens. Um, so I can see, understand. All right, you're trying. I want to protect my employees. You got to run the drills. Unfortunately, you don't got to do the LARP version. Right. The, the, the person you hire, you go. All right. So what's your what's your plan for this? Oh, I, I'm going to make it really, re, re, uh, I'll, I'll make it uh, relevant is what I, I'll, I'll make it very relevant. They'll, they'll certainly know what to do in an active shooting. I'll promise you that. Absolutely. What, and, and just, just, just let's play some devil's advocate. Okie dokie, right? okie dokie, okie dokie. What if... In this situation, you happen to have the good guy with a gun that the amosexuals always want to be unseen. Yeah. This could have gone so much worse. Mm-hmm. I And you didn't bother to tell the cops that you were going to stage an incredibly realistic massive shooting, uh, mass shooting. And can you imagine being the people who hired the guy, right? And you're at work and you hear all this stuff start and slowly you start putting shit together in your head and the blood just drains from your face as you realize what's going on. Like I, I, I you know, that little, that little special effect they do in, uh, in, in movies where they, uh, they pull the camera back while zooming in on it. That's that's you. That's you in that yeah. moment. That's that's the oh no. Oh my god. Oh, perhaps I made an. Uh, perhaps it was just miscalculated. References. Get a fucking reference. Or you know, just don't do this. Just don't hire a guy to pretend to kill your employees. Just don't do that. Just put a Jesus policy. Do that. That's not what <sighs> Jesus would do. Just, just put a policy in place. Pass out some pamphlets. Let everybody know what's going on. And cross your fingers, which is pretty much the best you can do anyway, honestly. Or, you know, you want to run the drill, you run around yelling, bang, bang, bang. I just, I'm imagining this nice old lady <laughs> jumping off a fucking retaining wall into a dumpster. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Good for her. Yeah. It's... <sighs> like, I thought the, the, the office throwing the cat into the ceiling was the worst thing. No, it, this actually happened and it's worse. You know what the real motherfucker is? Uh, the therapy that Catholic charities will probably cover his employees is going to be with a priest. Not a mental health professional. And I'm not saying that every priest is a terrible person, but they are not mental health professionals. No. No. This just... I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. And I know I'm bringing this up too much, but it's kind of the main story in my life right now. When my husband passed away, I finally got the pastor who would be performing the service on the phone. Do you know what he said to me? He said, boy, death is just a pit, isn't it? Was he from Mayberry? Death is just the pits. And I thought maybe he just doesn't know what to say. I mean, that's weird because it's kind of his job. But no, he put it in his, his sermon, too. That's his line. These are not mental health professionals. <laughs> I'm laughing. And you, Jesus Christ. I don't even remember that. I was fucking there. I was, I was more concerned, which is a camera fucking where I didn't even fucking remember that. Oh my god! All right, so he more been doing all the tech for him because he couldn't figure out how to work his own tech. That's true, <laughs> and he had a Mac. It was a Mac. I mean, for fuck's sake, if you can't figure out how to work a Mac, Jesus yeah, Christ! Okay. I thought. Uh, all right, I thought you were going a different direction. They they okay. they fucking make the Mac so anyone could fucking do that, and he couldn't fucking figure out how to run a fucking yeah. playlist on a fucking Mac. Jesus. Yeah. 
Oh, so the the first thing we learned this week is. Jeez, I don't even know what the fuck. You you don't need to. If you're running a Catholic organization, try to do the what would Jesus do thing. Hey, yeah. That he surprisingly conservative and not in the ways you think of when you think of conservative. We have learned that um chargebacks are a better op- option than arson. Um it's chargebacks are sort of a financial arson, let's say. Uh we've learned that you know what? If your friend is about to 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 make a phone a bomb threat to a soup factory, you might be you don't need to be that good of a friend. Loyalty is great, <laughs> but sometimes loyalty is talking your friends out of felony. We've learned if you're going to try to transport illicit substances, make an effort. Fucking try. Like, just to do something. Let the people who are working at the TSA feel like they're earning their, their salary. I'm going to feel good about themselves. Like, you know, this is like, at this point, they, someone busts this lady, like, why are we even here? They don't fucking need us. Jesus. Um... We've learned that the people flying your plane might decide to just start throwing down midair. Good luck. Yeah. Finally, we've learned if if your plan to cheat on an exam involves second degree burns. New plan. New fucking plan. What? In the future, if you're wondering, death is just the pits, isn't it? When is when I decided to. Re- online i appreciate that west wing reference immensely so thank you for that i i motherfucker i tell I literal that is like i can't we've had terrible stories on here that's a whole new level that is amazing like jesus i i, I fuck me can you just picture if if the Catholics are right and the Christian God is up there floating on his cloud? Can you just picture him signing on to work that day and seeing what his followers have brought unto the world today? He would definitely go Chuck Shirley from Supernatural. Like he'd be like, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> I try and I try and I try and you fucking people. 